and he really needs you to go kind of crazy for him, if that's okay. So we're going to start again at the, at the front and build and build. Applause, let's do it. Please welcome to the stage, Rita Mordain! Hello. Uh, my name is Pritam and I'm a PhD student focusing on developing cancer diagnostics. Cancer is a difficult thing to make jokes about, especially because I am a Virgo. <laughs> and um, I can't really assume what Mercury in retrograde must look like for cancers. <laughs> By the way, I just found out that Virgos are the most compatible with cancers. So I guess it makes cosmic sense that I'm married to my work. <laughs> in fact, the closest I've come to sex in years is when the other day I tested like 200 samples of semen <laughs> for prostate cancer biomarkers. <laughs> and my findings were that test tube orgies are not nearly as fun as actual orgies. <laughs> Whenever I tell people that I'm doing cancer research, I get a couple of standard responses. The most common one is, oh, that's amazing. Good for you. <laughs> but almost immediately, they start talking about someone in their lives who either has or had cancer. Now, as someone who's had family members have their battles with cancer, I get it. I totally empathize. But it's happened so many times now that honestly, uh, I'm kind of sick of it. <laughs> like I started seeing a therapist recently, and the first session, she's like, Good eye. My name is Patrice. My eye ask. What's your PhD in? <laughs> um, cancer research. Ooh! <laughs> splendid! <laughs> Jolly good! She forgot she was Australian, by the way. <laughs> well, actually... My mom's been suffering from breast cancer. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and, and how does that make you feel, Peter? Well, pot rice. Before the session, I was mildly depressed. <laughs> After this, I'm gonna go and Google euthanasia laws in Australia. <laughs> so, splendid. <laughs> Jolly fucking good. <laughs> Biggest problem with cancers is that by the time the disease presents symptoms and a person is diagnosed, it's already too late. Even people that receive chemotherapy uh, run the risk of the cancer returning again worse than before. So the earlier the cancer is detected, the better are the patient's chances for survival and disease, uh, disease remission. So effectively, prevention is better than cure. Remember when Trump was the president? <laughs> and they did everything in their power to get rid of him, and they did, only to replace him with Biden? Biden is America after chemotherapy. <laughs> so yeah, you beat the cancer, but only just. And now he shakes hands with invisible people, 
calls his sister the love of his life. And the cancer could come back again, even stronger. The best way to get ahead of this thing is to have early stage cancer detection systems, which is what my research focuses on. Developing point of care testing platforms that can easily and accurately detect cancer biomarkers from different kinds of body fluids. And the technology in operation is actually very similar to COVID testing kits and pregnancy tests. If only there was a similar screening process for our political leaders. <laughs> Like if Trump and Biden could just piss on a test <laughs> before they pissed on the lives of millions of people. <laughs> and the test would say, not presidential. <laughs> About election campaign. No White House for you. <laughs> we would all have more competent leaders, and instead of politics, people could go back to being really pissed off about the miserable ending to Game of Thrones. <laughs> so, always remember, whether it's a disease like cancer or Trump, <coughs> prevention is better than cure. <laughs> Time to tell you that my dad had cancer. Now I have some very